Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose, serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to learn how to do business and life with service to make an impact in the world. What impact will you create today? And my guest on the show is international. We're going all the way out to Italy where my family's from. I'm so excited. And this is a subject that's very important because we are all in the internet one way or the other. Gianni, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Steve. And thanks very much to all the people being with us tonight. So we talk about data protection. That's you. You're a lawyer and you work on the legal side. Let's jump on the websites. How what how websites how necessary for them to support data protection? Well, uh, web is a machine and data is fuel, is gasoline of this. Every company has got today a website. Every company works online. All of us, we are connected 24 hours a day. We do everything with our uh, mobile, with an app. We do not go to the post office to send uh, a postcard, but we do it online. We pay bills, we order food online. We give all our existence uh, to, to the web to the and they need our data, not only my name of my address to collect uh, or bring me food. Uh, data is not just uh, is not just uh, an email or our address. Data is uh, our face, is our taste, is what we like, it's uh, the connections we have. Data can be revealed by websites that we visit. Mm -hmm. And uh, on our social, we give our life to our social. So protect data is really important. I, in my work, uh, apply the GDPR, the European law on data protection that is totally mandatory in Europe, but is mandatory even for companies from United States that want to work in European Union and collect as they need the data of European citizens. I'm not talking about only of Facebook and big data company. Even a small e-commerce, a shop online, they collect a lot of data and it must be done according to European law. What's the risk? Well, Meta Facebook recently received a fine of 1.2 billion euros. Chat GPT was blocked in Italy because it didn't protect the data of the kids. And uh, other companies ha has got this risk. So that's part of my job, the legal side of data protection, not only cybercrime not only defend from daily attack of your database and uh, memories. I take care of my clients, uh, protecting data on the legal way with proper consent, with proper papers, and I take care of the chain of data protection in company. If I give my data to Steve to buy something from him, Steve can give to his secretary, to his staff, uh, to all the members of his company, and so big companies uh, as well. And uh, Steve, let me point this. We are online almost 24 hours a day, and we give data to all, a lot of companies. In this moment, we are using a video platform, and they use our faces. They have very important biometric data. They can profile us. They can make eventually fake movie or someone can use our face to put in a video or something doing something not nice. And this law is important not only for companies, but uh, even from people to make them aware because uh, I, basically in internet, we are all liars. Yeah. All, all of us will lie at least three times a day because we answer yes to the question, did you properly read the terms and condition of navigations and what they do with your data? Right. And we say, yes, click, yes, click. Just and to get then you it. discover 
that to answer yes to the question, can I profile you and let you have best offers and give you, you and give your data to my partners, clients, suppliers, stakeholders, and Uncle Joe? Yeah. Now, how uh, how much is this a problem for United States comp- uh, websites and companies? Is there a lot of companies following the GB? What's it called? The GBB, GDPR, GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. PR. Very few. Very few. Very few. Okay. Very few, and uh, if they do not work, don't want to work with Europe, is not a problem. But if you want to be present, it's better to comply and uh, advise people what they do with data to, to avoid problems in Europe. But uh, let me add this. Apply GDPR means uh, even offer a better value of safety to your clients and visitors. It's called digital trust. To have a good system for data protection means to make your clients, followers, friends, safe that you will not use their data in the wrong way, that you will protect, you will not sell, you will not profile. So people can be very happy to have data protected and say, that's a good website, I trust them. So in companies must trust them. Yeah. Social media had huge problems with this. So increases your uh, reputation online, having the GDPR, and that's what you're talking about. Yes, absolutely increase your reputation. Mm, Steve, remember this. All of us, we use social platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and so on. And most of us, at the beginning, we think, wow, fantastic. It's for free. It's not for free. Is a contract, we can use platform and we pay with our data. We pay Facebook and Instagram with the opportunity for them to know everything about us, to know everything about family. And we accepted this, this contract. In Italy, we already have sentence from courts stating this, that we pay with our personality the use of internet. We pay with our click, like, and connections. That's a huge worth money. Data is the most ever stolen product in the world. The highest value now, too. Data is the highest over gold, silver, money. It's right. It's the highest data in the world, you know, highest. Much, much more value. Yeah. So people are listening, Johnny, and they're going, okay, what do I do now? As, as an end user, not the companies, but the end user. The user must should uh, take care and uh, know what companies do with their data. Every company must have absolutely a policy disclaimer or a policy banner. Company must have cyber security, but uh, they must even say, I take your worth value of data, I will protect in this way, I will not use, I will not profile and so on. Visitors must be aware of this because internet is a very risk ha- habitat. Now we live online, uh, theft of data are daily, but there are even worst crimes. And sometimes uh, one of the worst I have faced in my professional activity is called digital kidnapping. It's not the usual theft of identity where I take your face and uh, take all your money from your credit card of your bank. Digital kidnapping is a dangerous activity done by hackers when they take our data and pics and they create a double profile of us. And the worst is that it's very common in use for children. Where mom and dad put online name and face of children, there is someone on the other side of the screen, collect them, create a double profile, not fake, because data are real. Gently offered by mom, dad, and uncle. So 
they can create, they already have created billions of profile that are sold on webs on dark web and deep web. This profile can be used uh, for polls to decide who will win a, a talent show or to increase like on, on an Instagram or YouTube, but yeah. can be used for dangerous activities. That's the risk that we, yeah, for us. You mentioned dark web and people have seen it in movies, TV shows. Go a little deeper into what the dark web really is. Yes. And you can buy everything in dark web, included fake identities. That is not a good thing for us. Well, the white internet that we see, the one that we can surf from Google and normal research, is less than 5% of internet. Really? Yes. Less than 5%. So 95% is the dark web and the other thing that you Dark mentioned. web, deep web, and deep Mariana web. web. And Mariana web. The one used by military and secret services. Gotcha. And okay. remember, now we live too much online. We have changed our habits. We have young generations. They do not remember time when we had only a telephone home and ring. Yeah. yeah, we're old guys. We know that. <laughs> yes, we are old guys and we live with this. But young kids, they born with a mobile in hand, with a tablet. Mom and dad say, please watch a movie. We, we talk, we eat. And I talk for my activity with a lot of doctors. And they say, we have, we, we have detected the heavy problems in children. They do mm. not... Uh, connected they do not talk when they are eight years old they cannot swim professional because they are like this and i've read a terrible book from a german psychiatrist he's talking about a new generation a new disease it's called digital dementia Ooh, wow yes. manfred spitzer already wrote a book about this. Sometimes I make classes and seminars to teach parents to protect children. Yeah. But we have other diseases, phobia to not be connected. Yep. Yeah, I just, problems. yeah, and I just had a guest on a couple of weeks ago, Johnny, that said 75% of fourth graders read below their grade level. 75%. That's a big number in just the United States. Yes, so I agree. Let, let's talk worldwide. United States is probably one of the worst, but is this a, an epidemic worldwide too? Yeah. And we are going more and more in a digital direction. We will have yeah. metaverse shortly. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, me, let me say that uh, we are no more the men we used to be. Once we had the homo sapiens, now we have the man with mobile at the end at the end of the hand. We act like mobile, we think like mobile. Since was created the word to Google, we have totally deeply changes, changed in a deep metamorphosis. And Homo sapiens is no more Homo sapiens, but I call him Homo Googlis. Wow. Is the is, I wrote a couple of books about Homo Googlis. And let me say, honestly, I'm still the first one to use this yeah. and teaching this. And uh, Mr. Breen and Page, with the help of Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs, in less than 30 years created a new man. Mother Nature needed 30 centuries to create Homo Googlis. In 25 years, they have created, uh, in 30 homo centuries sapiens. for Homo sapiens, 25 years for Homo googlis. Well, that leads to, Gianni, a great question. The speed of technology, is it hard for to keep up? Is that one of the big problems, the changes? S Steve, mobile you are using now in six months will be old. This technology in one year will change and probably some works disappear and some other will be new. Young kids, what they study today in 10 years, when they will work, 
they will have to study again. We do not know where technology is going. Maybe some of us still remember typewriter. For one century, typewriter was the same object and gave yeah. job a good job to generations of uh, secretaries. Mm -hmm. We in 1975, Bill Gates said, "I want a computer on every desk." How many computers we have home right now? Too many. Too many. Your car, your television, Wi-Fi, air condition, your watch is a computer, your tablet, and everything is connected and will be more and more connected in the Internet of Things, IoT. And to yeah, work, right. they need more and more data. That's why we must be totally aware and protect our data. And companies have has they has have got a huge responsibility in front of humanity and new generations. Do you think is it's going to be hard to stay ahead of it? Because you're probably not ahead of it because of the fast technology. So you're saying these big companies need to come forth and start making some moves to, to help us, the end user. They should. They should. They should cooperate with schools, with communities, with families. We, we, have, we have, we are facing huge changes and we are doing this, but we are not ready for the next step. University of Cambridge wrote a, a book, a study, that we are going to a new so, uh, a new generation that is called Mangrovia society. Mangrovias are the plants that are born uh, that born at the end of the river at the beginning of the sea. The Mangrovia they do not care if it's uh, sweet or salty water, and for us it will be the same. We do not care if we are digital or in real life. Yeah. They will go mixed together. So you mentioned, waiting. yeah, no, I love this, John. This is such great information. And, and you're serving these people. That's why I wanted you on the show. This, yes. A lot of service has to be done to serve people that we don't know. We're just absent-minded and we're going crazy on the internet and it's very dangerous. Yes. You mentioned earlier, but I want to say this again. What's the stat on how often data is stolen? Stolen? Yeah. Daily, daily billions of still data. When you receive a phishing mail, someone can be, can take data from even from official mail. Someone is watching our uh, profile on a social platform. Yeah. Recently, in Italy, the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest and most important association of data protection expert was hacked. Dig wow. Digital war is basis in Ukraine and in Israel. Yeah. Digital companies, sometimes they are blackmailed to have back their data. Yeah. What if tomorrow some agency, health agency is attacked and we have no data? It's happened. You remember uh, Cambridge Analytica, the big scandal of Facebook a few years ago? Yeah. They were selling illegally data. Companies need more and more data. You can have it legally, respecting law, or, they, or you can have it legally, and there yeah. will be always someone ready to steal your data. So take care of your mobile. Do not open fake mail. But... I can speak hours to explain the system to hijack your computer and mobile. Yeah, yeah, no, but just to be aware, awareness is the big thing right now. What's your turn? Absolutely. Yeah, and, Absolutely. and that's and that's what you do workshops and teach people. So you mentioned the green room uh, before the show. Your favorite quote. What is your favorite quote? Ah, uh, yes, that's the quote of my office, and uh, that's why from Rome I'm here in the United States because Marco Polo didn't wait for spices in Venice. <laughs> and now every, every East or Indian count, India country like Marco Polo did is very close. 
I can speak in the United States thanking you right now, or I can be tomorrow morning in Australia and you are in Italy. So the world is very close. Business are local, but globally done. Yeah. And even in your small shop somewhere in New York or Los Angeles, you can sell everywhere and you must respect the rules of the places where you make business or collect data because collect data is a huge business. Right. So in a business plan for a company that's going online, which most are anyways, part of that business plan is data protection. Yes. H having a whole chapter or whole page on how you're protecting your clients data online. Yes. Make them safe. If you give, if you give me your data, I will protect and respect you, your child and your personality. I don't know if in the United States, but for us in Italy, it's normal sometimes your mobile ring and say, hey, Gianni, I want to offer you this product. I want to offer you a better service. It's forbidden now. It's forbidden. Yeah. We call it telemarketing. It's called yes. telemarketing in the United States. Yeah. Yes. Now in Europe, it's more difficult to have make telemarketing. You can do it only if users allow you to do it and probably will be the same in the United States because it's impossible to receive every day 100 calls of telemarketing. How oh, many yeah. do you receive daily? <laughs> Minimum of two. And probably one is fake. Do you know oh. what what they do in Italy, at least they do this. Are you Steve Ramona? And you say, yes. yes. They tape your yes, and they use it more times to make you close a contract. Wow. It's a crime. It's yeah. a fraud. Yes. So as lawyer, my first free suggestion is whenever you receive a strange call, Never use the word yes. Mm. Great tip. Use word. I, I like that because I didn't know that. So you said acknowledge, correct. Just stay away from that word yes. Yes. This is Steve Ramona, correct. Steve Ramona, correct. Yep. Or uh, how can I? Yeah. Okay. That That's great tip. Well, we're, we're getting to the end of the line, but this is my biggest question for you. Is there hope for the future? The future will be on computer. The future is online. All of us, even who is aware of danger, would never come back. We could not go back. We are going in a bright future that is bigger than the past. It's a mystery, and we must be aware how we use it. We can use internet and computer for the best solution and the best reasons. But in this moment, I read too much problems and one that is uh, hurting me and make me think a lot is that I read too many kids suicide for a video on TikTok. Yeah. We should think about this. Who is using internet? Probably me and you we are aware of this weapon we have in hand. How about the next generation? How about our children? When they say, make challenges and they have to die. They drink alcohol and Benzatril to make a video and show how they are strong, nice, cool. In Italy recently, a girl 10 years old hanged herself for a challenge. I see children die to uh, surfing on the top of the car or a train. So let's think about this. Some people is aware, some other no. I face personally the case of a man that was blackmailed for a sex video and he suicide. If you make a wrong pick of you, all the, all the 6.5 billions of internet users can have it. Yeah. That's scary. Well, thank you. And he used the word weapon. That's an interesting word for the mobile because it yes. can be a weapon. Like the internet can weapon. be really good. 
and the, the internet can be very bad. So and the, there is here you can have billions of news. Are you sure they are real or fake? I often read the Wikipedia, and the Italian version is different than English version or French. Hmm. Different information. And you can wake up tomorrow and start a channel and say the earth is flat. Someone will believe it, but that's not a problem. But I've read cases of someone that decide to cure cancer with lemonade and coffee. Wow. Very interesting. Well, yes. I, I, Gianni, I, God bless you. You're a true servant. This is dangerous, scary, but there's hope and you're, you're helping give us hope and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, guys, girls, women, men, be, be careful when you're on the internet. I think that's the recap of this whole thing. And if you have questions, reach out to somebody, Gianni, don't let those questions go unanswered. Get knowledgeable about it because it is, like he said, a possible weapon and we don't want weapons in kids' hands. With that being said, I thank everybody for listening and watching this incredible show. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart.